is our first character in Disneyland. First character in Disneyland. Hi Pluto. Jeffrey. Hi. <laughs> oh, what a good guy. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, very good. <laughs> We've got a lot, a lot of autographs in there from Disney World. That's only part of the magic. Let's not forget fantasy. Ah, hear that? When you wish upon a star, your dreams come true. For Walt, that was the very essence of fantasy land. Of all the lands, this was closest to Walt's heart. He even placed the Disney family crest right above the castle gate. Fantasy land was created by the same artist who created Disney's animated films at the studio. And soon those storybook tales came to life in an orange grove in Anaheim. For the first time, we could step into those worlds and become a part of the adventure. Every attraction tells a story, with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And sometimes a story has a surprise in it. In Adventureland in New Orleans Square, surprises happen all the time. In fact, Disneyland is the only place I can think of where you can be attacked by pirates, frightened by ghosts, and nearly crushed by a giant boulder, while keeping your arms, legs, and feet inside the vehicle at all times. And here's the adventure that started them all. Remote rivers through a treacherous jungle. Could something go horribly wrong? Only a punchline. Over the years, the Jungle Cruise has become a showcase for our handsome and witty river guides. Oh no! That big elephant is coming up to us and it looks like he's going to squirt us! Everyone in the back, get down! Don't worry, it never happens. <laughs> It was the duck, right? The duck? You know, every time I get all dressed up in my cowboy hat and pearl handled pistols, I think about the heroes of Frontier. <laughs> you see, Walt believed it was important to pay tribute to the pioneers who blazed a trail across Frontier America. And I agree. Especially when it involves a little girl in blazing six guns. <laughs> in Frontierland, you could be popular Disney heroes of the day, like Davy Crockett and Zorro. 
For a while, there was an authentic American Indian village. And in the little mining town called Rainbow Ridge, you could board a mine train or pack mule to explore nature's wonderland. And then the West got a whole lot wilder. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad was a thrilling addition to Disneyland's growing mountain range. The first peak was the Matterhorn, one of Disneyland's first e-ticket attractions. But the most out of this world mountain of them all is right here in Tomorrowland. When Disneyland first opened, Tomorrowland gave us a preview of the amazing futuristic world of 1986. <laughs> Okay, so the 1980s didn't turn out that way. But Tomorrowland is really about imagining the possibilities of the future. So we got to go to the moon before real astronauts did. Hello, welcome to the moon. As you can see, it isn't easy to work in these spacesuits, but this faceplate is all there is between me and an absolute vacuum. We got to travel through the mighty microscope on atom mobiles. Beyond the realm of normal magnification. We even traveled through liquid space on submarines. And no, you're not hallucinating. There were real live mermaids in the submarine lagoon for a while. But the only problem was, Real live young men kept trying to swim out to me. <laughs> Tomorrowland has always been a showcase for new ideas and new inventions, including one of Walt's most famous. Uh, audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. But this technology wasn't just for the birds. Walt's idea got better and, as always, bigger. Day marvel, it takes only five hours. Not only could these robotic performers talk and act, they could jam. Hit it, boys! Yes, Disneyland has had thousands of great entertainers over the years, and not all of them have had servos and circuit boards. I learned a lot about comedy by watching Wally Boat star of over 47,000 shows at the Golden Horseshoe Review. And he was only one of the great homegrown acts that brought their unique magic to Disneyland over the years. Disneyland's best magic trick happens every day at dusk, when all the lights come on and the magic kingdom is transformed before our very eyes. You know, that's one of the great things about Disneyland. Everyone has their own special memories. For some, it's the first time they walk through these gates. For others, it's their first parade. And I'm sure for all of you, it's watching me, Steve Martin, host Disneyland's big 50th anniversary. While shows and attractions are all great, I think for most people, the real magic of Disneyland is right here. It's you, Donald. Yes, it's you and Mickey and all the rest of the gang who always make us feel like old friends. Oh. <laughs> Shall we? Let's do it! Goodbye, everybody. You know, I have to admit, you would have made a perfect toast, Donald. Next to me. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here you may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America, with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world.
enjoyed our film, folks, The Disneyland Story. We will be having those fireworks over the castle tonight at 8.40. Now, if you're interested in seeing a Lincoln show, we're starting the pre-show film now here in the back lobby above the fireplace. The pre-show film lasts about four minutes. We welcome you to Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. <laughs>
and with it, God's help, I shall not fail. April 12, 1861, Fort Sumner, the cannon spoke for war. Civil war, violent, devastating. Now had come the reckoning, the supreme test that would decide whether a republic founded on liberty could survive the terrible strife of men's passions.
It is not our frowning battlements, our bristling sea coasts. These are not our reliance against tyranny. Our reliance is in the love of liberty, which God has planted in our bosoms. Our defense is in the preservation of the spirit which prizes liberty as the heritage of all men, in all lands, everywhere. Destroy this spirit, and you have planted the seeds of despotism around your own doors. At what point shall we expect the approach of danger? By what means shall we fortify against it? Shall we expect some transatlantic military giant to step the ocean and crush us with a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or make a track on the Blue Ridge in a trial of a thousand years. At what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever reach us, it must spring from amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we ourselves must be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all times or die by suicide. Neither let us be slandered from our duty by false accusations against us nor frightened from it by the menaces of destruction to the government, nor of dungeons to ourselves. Let us have faith that right makes might. And in that faith, let us to the end dare to do our duty as we understand it.
Right here. Oh, sorry. A lot of names? Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Like your shirt has all of our pants on. Jeff, Jeff, probably in there too somewhere. He's probably blending into the sky. Do that, don't you? Too much flashing. Yeah, not that here, though. We can see you from here. Alright guys, I'm gonna grab one for the camera. Ready? One, two, three. One more. One, two, and three.